Hello, Abnormal Family. Got an encounter for y'all out of Alaska. It's the, uh, uh, the little people. This person says that they're having an encounter with them and still to this day. Um, y'all may hear some thunder in the background as we're getting a uh, severe thunderstorm right now. What better time than to uh, tell a story than in a thunderstorm, right guys? But uh, let's get into this one. I think y'all's going to enjoy it. And I know for sure there's going to be some comments on this one. So, without further ado, let's see what you all think about this. My encounter with the little people is unlike any stories others could tell you. As I am constantly visiting with these people today, I can explain further by telling my story from the beginning. I have lived in Alaska my whole life, and growing up in a native village, I had heard other stories of mythic creatures living in Alaska, such as the bone men who run around after curfew, stories that would make children think their parents were just trying to make it so they weren't mischievous. I, however, was a firm believer in these stories and tried to explain them more in detail to my friends, who were all non-believers. I would say things such as one day these myths would catch up to them. I was naturally trying to scare them so that it didn't have to try to give them one of the lectures I normally give telling them a tale that my parents had once told me. One day when I was 15, I had decided to try to see one of these tall tales in person, which was both tricky and dangerous, as all of these things would either try to hurt you, the bone demons, or kill you and eat you, the little people. I decided I would try to begin to collect evidence, such as a picture of a little person, let's just call them gnomes, so I set out a featherless chicken outside of my window at night with a camera on it in the morning to see if anything came to take it. I would be able to see what took it by reviewing the footage on the hidden camera. I woke up rather late the next day and the chicken was still there. So I continued to do this test being very skeptical until the 11th day, but on the 12th day the chicken disappeared, literally. Upon review of the footage, I saw the chicken there one second, then disappeared the next. I continued to do this for a month, finding any bits of food I could to sustain the little people, until one day I couldn't find anything that I could take so that my parents wouldn't notice anything was missing from the pantry. We were low on money that month. I woke up the next morning and saw that there was some money stuck in my window, and the only thing that I could think of is that the gnomes were grateful for the things I had gave them, and they had given something back. The months flew past. I stopped the recording as though they would have appreciated that, and we just kept exchanging presents to each other. Then one day I had heard something outside of my window at night. I woke up to see nothing but pitch black outside, so I went back to bed and later heard the same noise, except this time I opened the window, and I saw that it was a face, a face with one of these gnomes. The gnome thanked me for the gifts that I had given him. I then thanked him for the money he gave me, and he told me that he would take me to his clan so they could thank me as well. The gnome lifted me up, and within what seemed like a minute we arrived somewhere in the wilderness where the gnome told me to crawl into a hole in the ground, which I did, being very sketched out by these events happening. I didn't know what to expect when I crawled into the hole. I saw gnomes everywhere in this underground utopia, and they were all staring at me, and I was a little freaked out, to tell you the truth. One whose name happened to be Kevin, of all things. All of the gnomes got called to a feast happening at 2 o'clock in the morning in my honor. They had a food already made up and at the tables when I was walking down the dining area. The food, however, looked to be like a human in a large pot that was burnt from cooking in an open fire. There was a lot of large pot sitting along the dining table what happened to be about 200 feet long in the epicenter of their abode. It was two o'clock, and all of the gnomes were gathered at this large table. And the only thing I can think is that there's no way that this large table, and the only thing I can think is, what is happening? Kevin introduced me to the large group of what had been a few hundred gnomes, who all thanked me individually after the introduction we had all began eating. 
I didn't know what to do. I decided that I shouldn't dishonor the gnomes, and I started eating their human feast, which included everything from eyes to human genitals. I thought it was best to stick to the meat, such as the bicep, to try not to get myself too queasy from the experiences. I ate and thanked them for the meal, and told Kevin that I needed to go home and to get some rest for school, and he took me back to my house. I fell asleep, and when my parents woke me up for school, I told them that I really didn't want to go and that I needed time to think about things, that I wasn't feeling well. My parents were understanding and told me that I didn't have to go that day. I continued to keep in contact with the gnomes, and we always gave each other gifts. I usually give food, and they usually give me money that they stole from other people while they were sleeping. The gnomes have taught me their ways, and I was accepted among them. I eventually got wanted, and I can go to them and collect human meat or take some of others' possessions. But on some nights, we go out mostly for our amusement and like to watch people at the peak of night. We like to watch you through your windows, making note of the patterns in your life, watching when others aren't near you, watching while you sleep, so that one day we can make our devourers out of the people that are mean to us. We stay hidden around your house, always following you sometimes in town while you're grocery shopping, while you're at the mall, or while you're visiting family. And we take notes of everybody, friends and family, most vulnerable, and the ones that we would like to eat, maybe, or just do away with. Mike, you may not believe these things exist, but I am truly one of them now, and I have been there and seen them. If we want anyone... We can find you at any time, and we will come to you, mostly through the window. Well, the reason I shared this one is I thought, and I thought about it, is I'm just going to say I'm a little skeptical of this. It goes to show to me that there is people out there that believe that they are these things and that is scary not all of the creatures sometimes are cryptids sometimes they're just normal human beings this person talking about eating human flesh and everything and going to the underground and seeing all these gnomes i don't know guys i'm going to leave it there for you guys i want your opinions on what you think is going on in this story is this person legit or is this person living in a fantasy world? I think either way, this person... Uh... I'm going to leave it there, guys. I look forward to your comments. And, um, you know, I'll have something to say back to you. So, uh, just let me know what you think about this encounter. And until next time, guys, keep your head on a swivel. Don't be something's dinner. And remember, the cryptids are not always the things that we should be afraid of. Thank mm -hmm. you.